I've been through things where I've been afraid before. I've had panic attacks and been through depression and things like that. And I attached the wrong energy to those things and not realizing that I was going through those things for a reason. And maybe those things were leading me to this. And we talked earlier about being prepared and always being ready. I think I've done the mindset work long enough to the day I was sitting here in this office, on this computer, on a Zoom call with my doctor. And I just looked at the video today when he said, we found cancer. I didn't do this. I didn't put my tail between my leg. My wife was behind me. And I looked at the doctor and said, let's go. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to Lux Media Studios. Welcome. You've landed on Zero Limits Living. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. Every week, I bring you information and inspiration to transform your life. You can watch this show on 1,000 different platforms, including Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, YouTube, and probably anything you're using or anything you could name. To make it easy, I'm putting all the shows in one place. Just go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com. Pack a lunch, sign up to be notified when there's a new episode, and enjoy what's there. Meanwhile, I'm so excited. I'm going to skip all of the chatter I usually begin these shows with about telling you about my coaching at MiraclesCoaching.com, my latest book, UnexpectedKindness.com, new book coming out, ZeroLimitsLiving.com. I can go on with all this kind of stuff, but... I've got a hero in the house. I have a legend in the house. I have a fitness giant in the house. I have a celebrity, an actor, an author, a speaker. I don't even know what else to say, except I have a short bio and I'll go ahead and say it just to be sure we all know who we're talking about. Clark Bartram is the host of American Health and Fitness, which is seen in more than 110 million homes. He's appeared on the covers of such magazines as Muscle and Fitness, Muscle Media, Natural Bodybuilding, and the list goes on. He starred in movies, including Batman and Dead End. He's written books, including Where Your Mind Goes, You Go, and Spiritually Fit. He's here today as an act of kindness to help men, particularly those over 50. I'm now in my 70s, so I want to keenly pay attention, but he and I are here to help men everywhere, and you're either a man or you know somebody who is, so this is relevant. Clark was recently diagnosed with prostate cancer, and he wants to help men detect and prevent this. He's on a mission to help, and that's one of the key reasons he's here today. So I'm going to shut up and say, Clark, welcome. It's an honor to have you here. Brother, thank you. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. You know, you and I have been going back and forth and trying yes. to get our schedules on point. Yeah. And I think we're both aligned in our missions. It's really to enrich people's lives and help them realize that there's more that we can get out of this life. Yeah. And that's really what I'm here to share today. So anything that we have that comes out, I'm I'm all all in. Well, that's fantastic. Well, my show is only 25 minutes long, which is already bothering me because I have 1,001 questions for you, but I've got to streamline it. I have to go to the heart of the matter because there's so many things I want to know about you. For one thing, and this is kind of in between trivia, in between us trivia, you're from Ohio. What part of Ohio? And Ohio, Northeastern Ohio. I just got back from there yesterday, as a matter of fact, and they were having 70 degree days. What? March. I'm from Northeastern Ohio. That's where I was born and raised, Niles, right next oh. to Youngstown on the Pennsylvania border. I went to Kent State University, uh, whatever. I don't know what they're, 72 to 76. Anyway, that's a separate story. We also have a lot of friends in common, many of which you probably don't even know. Everybody from Bill Phillips. I was in his Body for Life contest nine times. I got honorable mentions for it. This is like 15 years ago. I was in his transformation camp three times, and I have three medals on the wall that were hand given to me by Bill Phillips. One of the highlights of my entire life. I like, well, I can go on, Clark. I'm going to shut up because I'm taking over the stage. And I, I want to know, I want you to know that we have some commonality here with friends, with some background, and from where we've come from. But you're here for a different reason. You're now 60 years old, correct? Yes, sir. 
and you look fantastic. You are fit. I see a little gray, but outside of that, you look tan. You look muscular. You're ready to go into the next movie. You all set? I have to be ready at all times. That's how I built my career years ago. I told a photographer my, by the name of Ralph DeHaan, if you ever need me, I'm always ready. And one day he called upon me and said, hey, Mr. Always Ready, Muscle and Fitness, fitness needs you for an eight-page layout. Wow. So it was the next day and I showed up and to this day at the age of 60, I'm ready. Still have visible abs. <laughs> this is not Photoshop. This is real life. I, I love it. You know, I, I, I want to highlight one thing, though. You just said you're always ready. I think that's one of the secrets to success. My I have a drummer. I have a band and I've got this other stuff. And my drummer is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He has the same name as me, Joe Vitale. And he once said, you have to be ready. You practice every day. You do your workout every day. He said, I cannot promise you'll get a phone call. But if you get a phone call and you're not ready, you've lost. For sure. And so, uh, I love what you just said. You're always ready. How many times a week do you work out? You know, I go seven days. I, I consider my life a workout. It's not always with weights in the gym. It could be outside on a football field. It could be just out in my garage or taking a walk up the hill next to my house. I try and approach everything that I do with the intention, that's a key word, yeah. of getting some benefit from the movement that I'm doing because our human body is so adaptive. You know this as, bad, as good as anyone does. We're so yeah. adaptive that it reacts and responds just like that. But if we're just moving through life, it will only adapt to the level in which we challenge it to get stronger and better. Yeah. I like what you just said is kind of intentional movement. I'm just creating that phrase in the moment. But you said the intention is what matters. So if you're doing any anything, you're playing basketball, you're doing something in the gym, you're doing the laundry maybe. But if you have the intention that this is a physical activity that makes a difference in your body, it will actually do that. Am I correct in that assumption? I don't want to put words in your mouth here. You're 100% correct. So if I just stand up just like this yeah. right now with yeah. intention of creating strength in my quadricep muscles, now it's become an exercise, not just something that we do out of habit or conditioned behavior because our body, most of what we do is on the subconscious level. We don't think about our heartbeat. We don't think about regulating body, temp body temperature. We don't think about tears that come out of our eyes or sweat that comes out of our body. It happens naturally. But the minute we, and the single most important one is our breath, right? The first thing we do when we come to this planet and the last thing we do before we leave is take a breath. We don't need to think about any of the ones in between. <laughs> but when we do and we breathe with intention, now it becomes something completely different than us just inhaling and exhaling. It could be something that calms us down, something that stops us from doing something stupid, something that keeps us from having a panic attack or anything like that. If we get intentional about this thing that we just take for granted every single time we breathe. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So when I get out of the chair, I'm gonna be focusing on the fact that I'm building muscles in the thighs and in the legs. So when I get up, it's actually, I'm going to get up with more mindfulness for one thing. And then I have that added intention. People ask me about all the books I read and I say, I'm an intentional reader. So when I pick up a book, I have an intention for what I'm going for in there, which helps me actually enjoy and be more efficient in going through that. So another question I have for you now that you're 60 how have you adjusted your workouts? I, we, we just heard about the intentional workouts, but you know, the Clark of 20 or 30 or 40, and now the Clark of 60, have you had to do major adjustments or are you just kind of, you know, you're still a warrior. You just go to battle. I go to battle and it's mm. again, with the intention of knowing that I am working to get more efficient as a human. So what I've done specifically to that question is take my ego out of the equation. I'm not in the gym trying to impress anyone with how much I lift. I'm once again, very intentional mind muscle connection. So this morning, for example, I was in there and I had a relatively challenging amount of weight on there, but certainly nothing that would stop anyone in their tracks and go oh, look at how much Clark is lifting. <laughs> but what I was doing differently than I may have done in the past is I really go internally and think about the muscle that I'm working and squeeze and get the mind muscle connection. I really learned that as I've aged and understanding that every single rep counts, not the total amount of reps or their total amount of weight lifted. It's each individual reps. 
rep. And if I do those properly, I'm going to be benefited even greater than just throwing around some heavy weight with bad form. I love it. I love it. You know, I've been a big fan of Steve Reeves. In fact, I had his car, his gym, his clothes, some of the things he invented, total you know, hero worship there. And I know that as he got older, he dropped back. In fact, he started, some say he invented power walking because he left the gym in terms of he wasn't doing any more heavy lifting. Do you find yourself, and I heard what you just said, but have you made other adjustments in that regard? Or is it, you know, you're, you're still going, you're lifting, you're just doing it with more intention? The intention, I think, is probably going to be the key thread <laughs> line in our entire conversation. Because yeah. I think you're big on that as well. And I just think yeah. we get complacent in life. And because our body does so much without us thinking about it, we don't think about it. But the minute we start to think about it, going back to the standing up and sitting down. Yeah. So I have a client, he's 80 years old. And one of the things that I have him do is just stand up and sit down because that is something that we're going to need to do. But if we're starting to have sarcopenia, which is muscle loss, which happens to all of us, it is vital that we get muscle back on our body. So someone asked me today, Clark, is it possible to build muscle at the age of 60? Absolutely. 60, 70, 80, as long as you're intentional about the movements. Now, adding weight to them is a different story. That's where we need to be careful. That's where we need to be thoughtful as to where we're at and what our pre-existing conditions might be. So that's where a trainer comes into play and showing somebody the proper way to do things. But as far as my personal approach, a bench press is a bench press. A bicep curl is a bicep curl. It's just how I'm doing it in the intention I put into making that thing look like that. You know, you're reminding me, I trained with Frank Zane 20 years ago. I mean, I was in his house. I had three days with him. And the thing he kept talking about was intention. He said everything came down to intention when he was working out. He told me one time he was in the gym. And he was doing sit-ups for four hours. He was staring off into a corner. He was in a hypnotic state. Arnold walked in with a cigar, asking him to come take a break. And Frank was so in the zone. But he told me his intention was what ruled in that moment. And you're right. That's what I teach. That's what I talk about. But I don't usually use it in getting out of my chair. <laughs> I'm now going to do that. Because you've just given me an extra benefit for getting out of the chair or getting back into the chair. So I love all of that. So you asked me to be on this show. You, you, you and I have talked about uh, getting together in a wide variety of ways and different communications. And what I'm trying to get to, and I, I don't know if I'm just being very sensitive about this or not, so you have to tell me. I don't want to be offensive, but this is personal. You were diagnosed with prostate cancer. Yes, and I got real vocal about it right away. Did you have a oh. follow-up question? I don't want to cut you off. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I, this is where I was going, but I don't want to be offensive. So you've already gotten vocal. You've already been on a soapbox. You already wrote out to me. So you're here. What do you want men to know? Get their PSA checked. Yeah. So I would be offended, actually, if you didn't ask me about it, because I am now on a mission to get men to check their PSA. It's so simple for this to happen. And that's how I found out about my diagnosis. Wow. So I know that I already have a platform of men over 50 who look at me and they've been watching me for a long time. And you know, <clears throat> advertising and marketing people will watch, 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 watch. We have a shorter attention span now. So I'm out there saying, Hey, I want you to get in shape. I want you to lose weight. I want you to get your mindset right. And all of these things that I know are vitally important to living in a highly functioning body. But when I got this diagnosis, I said, okay, this platform I had has been elevated and broadened. Now men can relate to me because before they maybe couldn't because it's like, oh, look at that guy. I'll never look like that. Or I don't want to look like that. Or he's arrogant or whatever their preconceived idea was. None of it true, but I get how that works. So when I got this diagnosis, I'm like, wow, now I'm, I'm more relatable. And my goal would be that a husband who has been too busy doesn't want to go to the doctor, doesn't want to hear it or whatever. And her, his wife has been saying, honey, you need to go get checked. And now he sees me on this podcast. And then he goes to his wife, this guy that I've been watching for a long time, he got prostate cancer. Maybe I better go get checked. And she's like, I've been telling you that forever. You're going to listen to this guy and not me. So if I can be that voice, then I want to be that voice. Believing Before Seeing, a new bestseller by Candace Barr. Order your copy today. I love it. I love it. 
One of the things that you said to me, because you wrote to me, told me about the prostate cancer. I wrote back, said, let's get on the show. Let's book it and everything. And I said, uh, I was sorry to hear this. And you said you weren't sorry. And you said you weren't afraid. No. Why aren't you afraid? Most because, people are saying, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just, what good is that going to do me first and foremost? <laughs> right. I've been through things where I've been afraid before. I've had panic attacks and been through depression and things like that. And I attached the wrong energy to those things and not realizing that I was going through those things for a reason. And maybe those things were leading me to this. And we talked earlier about being prepared and always being ready. I think I've done the mindset work long enough to the day I was sitting here in this office on this computer on a Zoom call with my doctor. And I just looked at the video today when he said, we found cancer. I didn't do this. I didn't put my tail between my leg. My wife was behind me. And I looked at the doctor and said, let's go. And I put a smile on my face. And I knew in my heart, like there was a reason. And I don't consider myself a scapegoat or some sort of martyr. I just understand that I have a platform. And I would not be doing anyone any good if I didn't say anything about it, or I hid, or I was scared. And I didn't go, let's go. And now I'm researching different ways, different modalities, different healing, Yeah, I guess, paths. Mm -hmm. So I can inform and educate other men that there are other ways to handle this. And the first is the mindset. Yeah. So, No, this is fantastic. In fact, one of my follow-up questions was going to be, what are you doing about it? Are you going the traditional route in Western medicine? Are you going Eastern? Are you going alternative? Do you have an answer to that at this point? You said you're still researching. Well, I've got a great answer. One of our mutual oh. friends, Joe Polish, yeah. I reached out to him and you know, being one of the most connected humans on the planet, we both right. know that. I said, Joe, who do you know? And instantly he said, there's a guy that rented from me in one of my buildings in Scottsdale. His name's Dr. Tom Inkladon. You need to call him. So I immediately called Dr. Inkladon. And what we've done is a deep dive diagnostic on me to find out all of the reasons I ended up with this diagnosis. Because as you know, cancer is a symptom. It's not the re it's not, yeah. it's just a symptom. Like depression is a symptom. And all of these other manifestations <laughs> that we find ourselves in is just a byproduct of something deeper that we need to investigate. So just like PSA, it's a check engine light. So cancer is a check engine light. So Dr. Inkladon, we've looked at chemical exposure, heavy metal exposure, parasites, all sorts of different things, bacteria in my gut, bacteria in my mouth, stress, whether it's emotional or environmental, all of which collectively add up to these things that we have put a label on in this world and we treat the label, not the underlying issue. So I just came back from Scottsdale where we did multiple different modalities of healing and we had a pick line in me. And after each one of these treatments, we tested my PSA to see which one drove it down the most. And we've determined which one is the best. So I'm going back to Scottsdale. I'm gonna stay there for a week or 10 days go in hard on the paint, hard in the paint on that treatment and see how much we can get my PSA down. And then I'm also with that, I'm, I'm changing the vernacular around this diagnosis where if someone had a lower level than I have, they would call it active surveillance where you just watch it. What we realized the other day, there's nothing active about the surveillance that they're doing with standard of care. They're just sitting around and waiting to see if it gets yeah. worse. I want to teach men the things to do in the meantime and proactively surveil what's going on, like lift weights and, and get your mindset right and start eating this way and, and stop using these endocrine disruptors and all sorts of things that collectively add up to what the symptom is of cancer. Oh, th this is fantastic, Clark. This is thank you so much for sharing it. So if there's a guy watching right now, and there might be lots of men watching, and I mentioned I'm in my 70s right now, so I'm paying attention as well. In fact, I got my blood test last week, partly because of, of you bringing it uh, uppermost to mind. So it was like, well, let's just go do this. And I'm in the clear. So all systems go. But for the men who might be either worried, we know they want to go take a blood test. Maybe they come back and it's something like you. Where do they go? Do they go to the person you went to? Are there other resources? What would you recommend as a like five tips? So the first thing I would say is this. Don't let any sort of 
diagnosis dictate your treatment. Don't let any fear dictate your treatment because if you go the standard of care route, you're going to see your urologist first. So if your urologist is a surgeon, they will immediately say, you need to get that thing taken out. And that might not be the best course of action for you. Maybe you don't need your entire, entire prostate removed. So the number one thing is don't let your fear dictate your treatment protocol, because that is yeah. the worst thing that you can do. The second thing would be you have time. In most cases, even with extreme Gleason scores, mine's a seven, but in well, a four plus three equaling seven, that, that's a really slippery slope conversation, but they'll know if they got a diagnosis. You have time to seek out wise counsel. And again, whoever you're seeing in the standard of care model is going to sell you their protocol. You are in a sales pitch every single time you go to a radiologist, a surgeon, a hormone deprivation therapist, any of these different treatments. And I'm not saying they're bad, but what I'm saying is their job is to sell you their treatment protocol. So no, when they're writing on their whiteboard saying you're a four plus three is a seven, you're an unfavorable intermediate risk, and this radiation is 85% safe, you need to understand that they're selling their thing and they're also data, they're, da they're mm. all, uh, picking the data <laughs> according to driving their initiative. Again, they're not bad, they're just doing their job. So you need to understand that is the standard of care model. Now I'm opting for a different sort of protocol, which is more integrative medicine. Mm -hmm. We're looking at why I got this and what are the things that we can do to get rid of things in my body. And then I'm watching what is on the other side as well. I've already spoken to proton therapy and brachytherapy and all of these other treatment protocols that are there available to me in the need Someone says, Clark, you need to go get this taken care of now. It's serious. And the way you know it's serious is if it's metastasized outside of your prostate. If it stays within your prostate, you still have time. If your PSA is going down or stabilized and not having PSA velocity, then you're okay to look at other things. And here's something else you need to understand. You will be hit with the fire hose of anecdotal treatment protocols by everybody that loves you. Put coffee enemas up your butt. Drink this, that, and the other thing. While it may have worked for other people, you are an individual. So either side of the fence, you need data on you to understand what it is that you are dealing with as an individual. Now, I know I just puked out a lot of stuff there, and hopefully you can pick some things that work for you. Yeah. And and that's what I'm doing, Joe, is I'm, I'm doing a documentary about my entire process. Oh. I'm sneaking phone videos into to my appointments. I'm bringing camera crews in. I'm getting them approved now. So everywhere I go, I bring in a camera crew and I'm videoing all this. So I have my nonprofit, checkitlikeaman.org. I have my PSA screening kit that I've made so no man can say, well, I don't have time. I ship it to your house. I mean, it's like, I'm all in on this, brother. I'm all in. I, I can hear it and I can see it. Where do they go to get this material, get your kit or find you? So ClarkBartramSystems.com. Everything's on there. I've got podcasts on there about my process. I'm sharing a lot of great information. I'm getting on great platforms like this. And I just want to thank you again for the opportunity to share your platform because I realized you've invested a lot of time, energy, money, years to be here today. And I never take this for granted. I always realize how blessed and fortunate I am to align myself with someone with your credibility in the world. Uh, Clark, thank you very much. I am totally upset because we're running out of time. Uh, I mean, we have minutes left here and I've got hours. We have to hang out or, or work out or do something so we can visit some more. Let me ask you this. What do you think is the most important thing that you want people to know, whether it's men or women, this could be a life lesson, this could be a tip, it can be a quote, it can be anything. I'm giving you a platform to say what you think is important right now. Take control of your own health. When you go to your doctor, if you say, hey doc, I wanna get my PSA checked or any other test for that matter. If you're a woman and you wanna say, I wanna get whatever you wanna mm -hmm. get. And they say, mm -hmm. well, you know, you're not within the guidelines right now. You just look back at them and say, I don't care. It is my health and my, you know, I'm doing this. 
Yeah. You cannot yeah. tell me I cannot do this. So any good doctor will allow you the privilege of not even the privilege, the right to take your own health into your own hands. We have this idea that because they wear a white coat and they have a stethoscope and all these certificates on the wall behind them, that everything they say is right. It's not. It is not. And if you allow them to dictate your health with the seven minutes you have in their office with them, and when you leave, they go on to the next person and completely forget about you, not because you're not important, but because they're so busy yeah. just doing this business, yeah. the business yeah. of medicine. So look, please understand that if insurance turns you down, push back. If your doctor says no, push back. You need to take your health in your own hands. I, I love this, Clark, and I'm going to grab a couple more minutes with you, and they may turn me off or kick me out of the studio, but I'm going to go for this because I think it's important. Your attitude, your strength of mind, the charisma you're bringing, the, the confidence, the dedication, even turning this into a movie, this is a cause, this is a mission. It's a life mission. It's for your life. There's a whole lot that's going on that gives a lot. It exudes power, but the average person the average person is scared. The average person feels alone. The average person doesn't have six decades of fitness and gym and being on the cover of magazines or being in movies. They don't have that confidence. So if some one of those guys is listening right now, how do you encourage them? How do you give them a leg up? What do you tell them to do? They're thinking, that's great for Clark. It's easy for Clark. He's kind of been prepared for this. This is his moment. And they're going, I just got this diagnostic and I feel like killing myself. Yeah. Community. It's important to surround yourself with people who are going to support you and lift you up. Community is one of the most important things that any human needs to tap into. And it's a small community. So if you're that guy and you're struggling right now and you're like, what do I do? Reach out to me. Reach out to me. I promise you, I will get on the phone with you. I will talk you through this. I will help you relax. Because I have all of this years of training my mind, I wasn't prepared to hear those words, we found cancer. But when I did hear that, I'm like, let's go. I'm the perfect guy for this. I, I want to help men. Like, this is what God put me on this planet for, is to be who I am right now in this moment. And this is not manufactured. This is not fake. This is me 24-7, 365. Anyone who knows me says, Clark, you're, this is perfect. You're on brand. This is exactly what was meant for you. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I love your energy. I love your mission. I love what you're doing. I want more time with you. This is unfair. <laughs> uh, you've written some books. Which book do you think people should read? I didn't uh, I didn't know you wrote Spiritually Fit, which is personally engaging to me, so I'm going to order that. But is there something that it's you... a good book? I think it's out of I, that was years ago, but I might have one in here. I'll send you for sure. Where wow. Your Mind Goes, You Go is a really good book. It came out of the dark, one of the darkest moments in my life wow. after I had a panic attack on an airplane. I heard Joyce Meyer say, where the mind goes, the man follows. And I'm like, boom, that's the title of my book. There's a great story behind that. But then Magical Mornings is another great one. They're all really good books that came from my heart. I don't write because I want to write a book. I write because it's been in me yeah. and it needs to come. You know this. Yes. It has yeah. to come out or I will explode, man. Right. You have to give birth to it. Oh, my God. I have more questions, and but I, I'm going to have to let you go. Clark, I can't thank you enough. You are an inspiration. You're a hero. You are motivating, inspiring a whole lot of people. And you're making a difference right now in the health, internal health with these people, with what you're doing. Thank you. And your website is Clark Bartram Systems. Is that what you said? Yes. Com? Yes. And then there's checkitlikeaman.org, my nonprofit, 501c3. If anyone wants to donate to that, the money goes to me traveling and doing podcasts and goes to the production of this documentary and all of the other things that I don't have time to share right now. But if anyone is looking for a worthy cause, that is there. It's completely tax deductible. And you definitely want to go get your PSA screening. And again, if you're that guy who's scared, reach out to me. I promise you I'll get on the phone. That's amazing. That is a true act of kindness. I don't even know what to say here. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. We've been talking to Clark Bartram about wellness, fitness, spirituality, mindset, and so much more. You've been watching or listening to Zero Limits Living. Every week, I bring you inspiration and information to transform your life. You can see all the episodes on 1,000 different platforms or just go to zerolimitslivingtv.com. 
I want to thank Lux Media, Candace Barr, Nick in the studio, all of you for tuning in. I love you all. Expect miracles. Thank you. <laughs>